Okay, welcome everybody to uh, class once again. Thank you for joining in for uh, another uh, time of learning and looking into God's word, especially with regard to marriage and family. A reminder for the e-learning students to also complete your assessment um, and uh, to ensure that you do it before the end of the course because it goes into your final scores before you get a certificate as well as our students here online uh, those of you who joined in late please ensure that you complete your assessments uh, on time and uh, so that you can be marked for your uh, final grade right um, so through last week we began another portion of um, uh, looking into marriage and family last week we looked into the challenges that uh, come as uh, in in marriage in marriage in a relationship and uh, we looked at biblical instructions on dealing with some of those challenges um, today we are uh, it, it's a follow follow through or a follow up of what we are what we picked up last week and um, it is to um, specifically deals with um, you know in the challenges after post the challenges that people face in marriages in relationships where there could have been a conflict or where they have um, where there have been uh, struggles what we do notice and we see is that it leaves us with uh, a deep sense of hurt um, strong wounds um, and a lot of pain uh, because of the challenges or the situations that have um, that have taken place and this lesson that we are going to be doing is um, is is a word of encouragement and um, also I'd say not just encouragement but also certain instructions from God's word on how uh, you one can move forward after being wounded or after being hurt um, in a way that they continue to live in hope and to be able to release um, the pain or the hurt um, that they have experienced as a result of the challenges that uh, that may have come by in the relationship okay so today's uh, uh, the, our first lecture is about how we could keep moving forward into the future by releasing the past, moving, pressing forward by releasing the past. Um, for you could follow along, and I am on page uh, 137 on chapter 12, which is pressing forward by releasing the past. Okay, um, so. Uh, as I did did again mention, we're going to be looking at this uh, uh, for, for the, those who've been wounded, those who've been afflicted through the challenges, some of the challenges that we spoke about last time, and how they could move forward and not continue, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, and not stay in the the old or stay in the pain or the resentment or the bitterness but press on forward uh, by the power of God and by the grace that God gives um, to move despite the challenges we have gone through okay so um, you know in our own experiences um, and in our own families we may recognize that the pain or the wounds that are caused by people who are close to us. Um, it, you know, it could be through words, it could be through actions, it could be through behaviors, through criticism, can deeply affect um, us and our emotions. Um, it can leave us feeling very torn, very uh, um, broken, and uh, also, with a sense of uh, fear on how we can move forward, especially if there isn't a resolution that comes as a result of the challenge one faces. Mm, it can it can cause a lot of uh, uh, wounds and and scars, deep scars. But what uh, you know, the hope of God's word is, and we we know that for us as believers, we cannot allow that pain to stick on 
or to be so prevalent in us that it takes away the hope and the promise of what the future holds for us. Okay, um, so despite whatever the wounds may be, and uh, although yes, we are looking at it largely in the part of marriage, but um, you know that I, I want to you know extend this to other family relationships as well. The hurts and wounds that may be caused by parents, hurts and wounds that's caused by children or those caused by siblings or um, yeah, you know, any, any form of relationships where you've trusted them as a, uh, as a brother or as a, as a person who you've been vulnerable to. And then scripture says that, you know, in Psalms 42 verse nine, it says, even my best friend, the one I trusted, the one who shared my food has turned against me. David is talking about this, you know, and, and is really pouring out uh, his heart to God of what he's experiencing inside when someone hurts. So the, so the pain is real. The pain is intense. Uh, and uh, a lot of times, maybe you may be advised to let it go, to forgive. Yes, these are all things that we know we should be doing, but it can seem a lot more difficult than... Um, than it being as simple as someone saying that. But we know that for the sake of our own spirit, for the health of our bodies, and for our relationship, our, our fellowship with God, we must come to a place of releasing that hurt, releasing the past, and uh, coming to a place of receiving healing and building ourselves in the Lord so that we can move forward. Um, you know, certain examples that I can uh, specifically think about, you know, with stories I've heard, with personal experiences, <clears throat> the pain that is caused by a spouse, especially <clears throat> when there is dishonesty or when there is unfaithfulness, when there is, um, when there are probably lies that come up or even um, uh, what actions that may seem uh, like neglect or actions that may seem as if one doesn't care, okay, a sense of insecurity that comes up does create deep wounds in people's hearts. Situations where, um, and, and I see this very common in, um, uh, you know, especially in, in the, the kind of culture that, that I'm in, where um, a lot of issues come up as a, because of money and property. And, um, you know, there are people cheating each other. Um, I'm, I'm talking about family members cheating each other of property or money or wealth. Um, and as a result, feeling very let down and, and uh, upset of the way that they've been they've been handled and treated. So these things can, and, and some of these scars continue to remain for years, for years. And uh, there's a lot of regret and a lot of anger and pain that uh, people get into. And we see, um, you know, just, just um, research in itself shows that when we harbor negative emotions, it uh, not only causes destructions in relationships, but it causes severe destruction in our emotions that tends to uh, manifest itself in physical illnesses, physical symptoms. Um, you know, a lot of the physical symptoms that you see or physical illnesses that you see with, with regard to hypertension, headaches, um, uh, vascular diseases, uh, neurological diseases have its root somewhere in emotional uh, pain that people have been carrying over years. Um, I found something, and, and, and this is outside of the book, but I found this uh, extremely interesting um, in a research that I read about autoimmune disorders. Autoimmune disorders are those that are um, where, you know, the healthy cells of our body uh, sorry, the, the cells that fight infection of our body, they're called the fighter cells, actually attack our own cells, our own 
healthy cells. That's what autoimmune disorder is. The body does not recognize the, uh, the 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 other cells as its own, but it recognizes it as as alien or it as foreign, and so it begins to attack. And you know, so there was a research that was done that, uh, you know, people who who uh, who kind of have a tendency to self loathe, you know, self hate, or put themselves down, you know, have poor self esteem poor sense of image, uh, you know, those kind of people tend to have a lot more of autoimmune disorders. So we do see that what we carry in our emotional selves begin to not just affect us, of course, spiritually in our relationship with God, in the way that our prayers are hindered, in the way that we have fellowship with God and, and receive the fullness of God. Now, that is that is the biggest thing of it all. But in addition, what we face here, even in our lives, is a sense of emotional breakdowns and also physical issues. So whatever the cause or whatever the struggle may be, whatever the challenge may be, um, we must ensure that we release this. We, we don't hold on to the past, hold on to hurts, to pain, because at the end of it, it's, uh, you know, you're the, uh, you know, there is this, uh, I, I, I hope I quote this right, but, uh, you know, unforgiveness is like taking poison and hoping that it kills the other. Right. So that's I, it, it's that's what it is that, you know, you you harbor unforgiveness inside thinking that, uh, you know, you are you are uh, hitting back. It's at maybe your offender. But uh, in other words, you're, you've actually hit back on yourself. You've, you've killed yourself. So releasing the past is something that is needed. And uh, this isn't easy. And for all of us who've gone through pains, gone through struggles, know that it isn't a very easy thing to let go of pain. But the biggest assurance that we have in God's word is, as it's written in Psalm 23.3, he restores my soul. God is the one who restores our soul. He's the one who refreshes even the emotional part of us you know god's just not not just interested only in this in our spirits but he is so interested in the emotions you and i harbor if you look at further scripture and maybe i'll ask one or two of you to read the scripture uh, i'm on page 137 and if someone could read two scripture verses, one is Psalm 30, 11 and 12, and the other is Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. Would someone kindly uh, read that, please? Just unmute and read that. Yes, go ahead. Yes, <clears throat> Psalm 30, 11, 12. Uh, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Thank you, Christopher. The next verse, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptability of the Lord and the day of vengeance of a God, to comfort all who mourn, to counsel those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhakar. Right, so through these verses, you see that 
God is the one who brings about a restoration of even our emotions. He's the one, and, and you see that through Isaiah, it says, you know, he, he's the one who consoles those who mourn, verse 3, uh, gives them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So he's the one who replaces all that is negative that we may not be able to churn out out of ourselves but he's the one who brings this place this uh, this place where we have joy we have gladness we we are taken out of the captivity of our emotions and our thoughts and um, you know often we ask how does that happen and i i think you know some of these some of the ways of how it happens is is supernatural mm. I mean, all of us have gone through emotional pain at some point of the time. And the more that we fix our eyes on God, knowing that he restores our soul, you know, you'll begin to see that uh, maybe one day you just wake up and you're trying to dig up to see what happened to the pain that you were feeling. And you'll suddenly see that, you know, it's not there. It's not there. It, cannot be felt it's it's not tangibly felt like you would and i believe that's supernatural of course there are things we need to do intentionally to go back to the word to release it we can't be holding on to the pain and hoping that you know uh, God can use use even the pain to restore us. There needs to be a release. And that's the part that we do to be able to release, to let go, so that God can do of it or God can make of it something wonderful. Now, as we as we are being restored, it is a journey, it is a process. And uh, the important thing in as we face challenges is something that that the the thread that runs through the gospel, which is forgiveness, okay? Um, in many things we know that um, often we do not have the power to control what may come upon us, the, the challenges or the struggles or any kind of offenses that come up upon us. We may not have control over it. But what we do have control over is not to be in a place of hate, to not keep walking in a place of hate. Okay, So when, uh, when we do harbor um, any, any form of those emotions, anger, resentment, um, uh, hate, uh, you know, a sense of uh, um, pain towards the person, it leads, it can be extremely difficult for us to keep going that way. It, it's like being chained. It's like being bound. And we are, as believers, we know that we can't be walking in that, that uh, darkness. When you look at 1 John 2, 9 to 11, it says, he who loves his brother abides in the light and there is no cause of stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother now, this hates is even if someone else has offended you, okay? He who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So as a believer, when we profess and say that the light of God is in us, we cannot be walking in darkness, walking in hate towards anyone. Because hate, like it says, will blind us. Hate that any kind of darkness that that there may be around us may will cause us to fall will cause us to stumble and we we may not be clear of what we are saying or what we are doing so it is a conscious effort uh, and a choice that we make to forgive scripture says you know in luke uh, 17 3 and 4 it says so watch what you do if your brother sins rebuke him and if he repents forgive him if he sins against you seven times in one day and each time he comes to you saying i repent you must forgive him okay so there isn't another way out for all of us who are in christ but the way of forgiveness and the 
the only way that we can get away from our negative thoughts or emotions or our resentment or bitterness is to release the forgiveness for the for what the person has done um we see uh, you know our, our biggest model for forgiveness is what jesus modeled even when he was being crucified we all know what he said on the cross father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and he was even in the midst of all the suffering and the pain and the undeserved punishment that he was going through he released that forgiveness so so much more when there was nothing that jesus deserved to go, to face what he faced and we being sinful as we are um often you know when we are offended there are times that we are also part and parcel of it you know we tend to feel justified that uh, we cannot or we should not release that forgiveness so our only example is the example of christ where we release forgiveness now when we look at forgiveness um uh, there are certain principles that we we notice about forgiveness first of all that forgiveness is a commitment we make it is something it is a choice that you make to let go of what you are holding against somebody so this can be any of those emotions you may be feeling when you've been offended so it's a commitment you make unto the lord that you will you refuse to hold on but you're making the choice to let go of uh the offense um so when you are releasing forgiveness to your spouse or to anyone okay so we will take this generally but of course in the sense of marriage of course so much more that we will we will need to look at this so when you are releasing forgiveness you're not waiting for a point of time when you are completely settled in your mind before you can release that forgiveness you're not waiting for a time to heal before you can release that forgiveness you have given the for you have uh, extended the forgiveness even before you have uh, felt a sense of peace or a sense of healing um so when you forgive when you do not harbor that anger you you're actually resolving it by releasing it over to god so that's that's part of the resolution when you release you're also receiving in turn you are re receiving the release um, the, the healing that comes from god forgiveness is also unconditional it's something that you give away without really expecting something back in turn so you may be forgiving someone one who probably doesn't deserve to be forgiven or who's not even who doesn't even think that they are at the wrong all right and you've released forgiveness to someone when they when they perfectly think that they are they are in the right right so forgiveness is unconditional where you are uh, releasing forgiveness even when you don't expect Uh, uh expect anything in return or even when they don't expect um uh they didn't think that they were offended right uh, or they've been offensive sorry they didn't even think that they've been offensive you continue to release that forgiveness because it is out of a command that we forgive because god has asked us to forgive forgive again is not something that comes out of your emotion if you're going to feel like forgiving maybe you will never forgive it is it is a willful choice it is a decision that you make you don't you may not feel like it but you do it out of your obedience for what what god has um uh said of 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 his followers so it is a choice and it is an act of the will okay um so when when we are when when a spouse or when a person who grants forgiveness what we are showing out is that we are being 
um, yeah, you know, a, a testimony of the love of Christ. And that's what we are expressing. It's not about being good or nice or sacrificial, but it is uh, it is exhibiting, you're, you're a witness of what God's love has done for you. So when you grant, when you give the forgiveness, you are you are in turn saying that the situation is, you know, is no more, is dead, and you you are no more taking the right to hold on to it or to dwell to dwell on it, but you are um, releasing it. You're also making the commitment of not um, regurgitating that offense again and again. You know, bringing it up again and again. We see that you know a lot of times we may say that we've forgiven, but we tend to bring up those issues, tend to, you know, dig it all back again. Forgiveness really means that you have released it. Released it means it's buried, it's dead, it's over, no more to resurrect again. You're not going to dwell on it. So the power of forgiveness is another uh, you know, it, when when you do extend forgiveness, it begins to release in you the healing of God. God God supernaturally brings about and gives that healing uh, for you. All right. Um, as we move on, forgiveness is one thing. Forgetting is another. You know, you would have heard a lot of people saying, you know, I can forgive, but I can't forget. Okay. Now. Even as I say that, I think I want to um, clarify that you may be, you may recall it, right? Recall is it? Maybe something reminds you of that offense, and you may recall it, but you are choosing to not dwell in it, to not, uh, to not keep reliving that experience. So when we look at uh, Philippines 3, 13 to 15, would somebody please read that? This is on yes. page 139, please. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, go ahead. Philippians 3, 13 to 15 says, Of course, my friends, I really do not think that I have already won it. The one thing I do, however, is to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So I run straight toward the goal in order to win the prize, which is God's call through Christ Jesus to the life above. All of us who are spiritually mature should have this same attitude. But if some of you have a different attitude, God will make this clear to you. Amen. Thank you, Abhi. So this, this verse, um, in verse 13, it says, um, uh, to forget what is behind me and do my best to reach what is ahead. So here we see, uh, and, and it's also talking, if you look at verse 15, it says, you know, uh, this shows spiritual maturity. When we have the same attitude, this shows spiritual maturity. So it's not just forget, forgiving, but also forgetting. And we see it in scripture. Uh, in Psalms, it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. In Isaiah, it says, uh, you know, he has taken away our sins into the depths of the sea. He's forever cleansed us. You know, he's as if we have not sinned. That's what justification is, as if we have not sinned. So he cleanses us, wiping away all the offenses. And um, our sins, he does not recollect no more. You know, so if, if we are to, uh, you know, if we had to have God recollect our sins, you know, it would be more than we could even count. But God has chosen to forgive us as well as forgetting what we have done. And uh, so, so just as, just as um, God does for us, you know, we extend that same where we choose to forget. Yes, we may recall, but what we, had, what we are choosing not to do is to remember the pain that it has caused us. So to be active in forgetting, 
to be active, to not bring this up. So, you know, some practical ways of doing that is probably there are, uh, you know, there may be times when people bring up past offenses. Uh, and usually we see this in families, right? Um, especially when there are um, when there are certain families that are enmeshed together and there's another family member that's apart, you tend to um, discuss past issues. One way of, of not engaging in that is to, uh, you know, be out, outright and open and say, you know, that's, that's forgiven, that's forgotten. I've released the person. I don't want to harbor that anymore. I, I don't want to talk about that anymore. I'd rather see, you know, the good of what has happened post that. So it, it, is, a, it is a conscious choice that we do even to forget. Now, even as we forget, the next thing is to be able to let go, to let go. Okay, Hebrews 12 verse 15, it says, Guard against turning back from the grace of God. Let no one become like a bitter plant that grows up and causes many troubles with its poison. Okay, the, the fact is when we hold on <clears throat> to an experience, it has the uh, ability, the potential to create a bitter root. And bitterness in us causes a lot of strife, causes poison. It's, it causes many troubles with its poison. So bitterness is like poison that will create further trouble to us. So when even as we forgive, we forget, we are choosing to let go. When we release it to God, it's actually shaking it off from us. You know, we're we're taking it off. It's like, you know, let's say an insect comes and says, you take it, pull it and, and throw it, you chuck it out. Now, because that becomes, if, if, if we continue to hold on, it becomes a burden that will significantly weigh us down. You know, in Hebrews 12, 1, uh, just, just after Hebrews 11 talks about the faith journey of a lot of... Uh, stalwarts in, in scripture. And then it says in uh, 12 verse 1, um, let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly. Okay, so whatever may come in the way of our faith journey, we need to let go of it, to need to uh, release it and, and not hold on to it. Instead, what do we do? Verse 2, fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the perfecter and finisher of our faith. Fix our eyes on Jesus rather than hold, fixing our eyes on maybe an offense or, an, or, a, or a hurt or a pain. Rather than that is to fix our eyes on Jesus. Okay. Um, as we do all of this, we've got to get into a place of um, seeing our offender as the way the Lord Jesus sees them. So we need to see, whether it's a spouse or it's a child, to be able to see them as the way Christ sees them. So when we have uh, forgiven them, we have we probably repented, they have repented before God, we see them as God sees them. And how does God see them? As absolutely brand new. Okay, And we need to acknowledge that the same uh, hope that God puts in their hearts is the same things that we want to assume as well, to be able to release that hope, release that desire that things will change, that things will, will work for good. So we're going to be seeing them with the same lens as Christ sees them. Okay? Through this, we also need to engage in our own healing and recovering by speaking the positive despite the kind of negatives that may be there. And the positive we're speaking is not those wishful thinking that we may say, but it is the promises of God that we, we declare into those negative situations. Because what, what we are doing is we are acknowledging that in Christ, there are 
many blessings that we have received. Okay, And although we may be naturally or in reality in a place of hurt or pain, we know that in Christ, there is freedom. In Christ, we are made holy. In Christ, we are healed. In Christ, we are delivered. In Christ, we are made whole. We are overcomers. We are triumphant. So many things, right? So we begin to declare the promise of those blessings in our lives, even though at those points, we may be feeling really low or, or really torn down or broken. Because when we declare the word of God, word of God is like the balm of Gilead, right? That soothes our souls and brings about healing for our lives and begins to bring about the purposes and the future that God has desired for us. So one way of our, uh, our healing comes is by declaring the promises of God, despite what we may be seeing in our current the, the situations or the, or the discouragement that we may be feeling, okay? And as we do that, we pin our hopes on this truth that God makes all things new. Um, reading from uh, Psalms, uh, reading from Psalms uh, 30 verses 5 and 11, it says, for his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You have turned for me my morning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. We see that God makes everything new. And some of the examples that we in scripture is, uh, um, is, is the reference that's given there is on Job where Job, um, uh, despite all the pain that he went through, the loss he went through, his family, his possessions, his health, all of that, after all of that, God restores back three times, uh, twice as much. He restores us twice as much as he had done before. So even though there was a season of pain, God brings him through uh, into something that is much more glorious than than the than the earlier one, right? We also see so many. Uh, there are many examples in Scripture that shows that one is Joseph, where through those years of imprisonment, of being hated by his brothers, of being betrayed, of being um, uh, uh, you know alleged dead, all of that. Yet God restores him from being a slave into being a minister. You know, God brings out, and that's the speciality that God does. No matter, when, whenever there are seasons of, um, of difficulty, knowing that God will continue to restore. We see even uh, in the life of David for years, even though there was an anointing over his life of being a king, we see many years that he was, you know, running away from an enemy. So much so that God, again, places him back into a place of glory and, and uh, hope. So with these examples that we see, we know that God is the one who turns around things for us, who turns our ashes into joy, who turns our mourning into gladness, who turns things, um, who restores and, and changes things for us so that we can we can shine and we can be filled with the confidence that God has for us. So, so even as uh, these situations pass, we come to a place of belief and trust and faith that God is the one who's going to do this for us. If we take the time to be obedient to his word by uh, extending that forgiveness by choosing not to uh, uh, experience that pain all over again, by choosing to let go, and by being proactive and declaring the promises of God through those negative situations. Okay? All right. I'd just like to open. We have around uh, eight, seven to eight minutes. Um, maybe I'd like to open the uh, class up for maybe certain questions or any thoughts? Yes, Sam, you can please unmute and speak. 
um thank you pastor um so i think broadly two things pastor that i'm still trying to uh you know make sense of so one is uh one is um, i think both of this has to do with uh the uh, some kind of emotional stability or uh, so which is beyond reason meaning uh, i may like i would say, let's say you know i would say okay i forgive this person and uh, uh, and and it's a it's a choice that i'm making to forgive you know this person and i will not i will not hold this person a prisoner and i will not go back and i will not let that hurt uh, come so i'm i'm making that choice however every time the incident comes up or the you know the person comes across maybe not spouse i mean throughout this sermon i don't know for some reason i was not thinking of <laughs> my spouse but of other people um mm. but you know every time the person's name comes up or there's some something that remotely connects to that previous incident uh, all those feelings come up uh, so even though i have made conscious choices uh, when those negative feelings come up even though i have known like how how does one deal with that so that is i think uh, the first question which is despite your mm-hmm. choice and despite you making proclamations mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and and also saying like i will not let it hurt but even then you know against your will against your choice uh like neg- negative emotions do come up like you know you may feel angry or you may f- you know just get reminded of how badly you were betrayed um, so you, you so do you just let it come and pass or like how how do you do it so that's one and the other is also i think i'm thinking more in terms of uh if on you being on the other side where you've hurt someone and you've uh, genuinely asked for apology and everything uh but 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 this person has not forgiven you you know and and uh despite all your sincere efforts uh, i mean i don't think there's anything more you can do from your end uh, the person just doesn't want to talk to you doesn't want to see you like if if you're crossing paths he would just he or she would just walk the other way so how mm-hmm. how do you so the, how do you deal with that okay. thank you so yeah thank you thanks samuel so i'll address your first question uh, what do you actually do when um when when the pain actually is is real you are, you may be making a choice of uh, forgiving but experiencing the pain um now this is this is something that will not magically go away okay but one thing if if you remember when we were talking when we were uh, read learning the chapter on resolving conflicts we spoke about um one of the first things that we need to do when we are resolving a, a conflict is to be able to prepare your own heart so uh, it that's a point of time when you're coming with an examination of your own emotions and what you are going through with the lord now the lord knows that you are broken you are angry or you know your your as mad is ready to kill the lord knows and there isn't any need to run away from that emotion what you do on a regular basis is to hand that over and say lord i cannot on my own deal with this emotion that i'm feeling right now but i am willfully giving it to you your word says that i need to forgive i need to release it but i am truly feeling this sense of anger and bitterness and this is not something i want to do at my on my own i am releasing this to you you take this over you show me how it i can i can begin to feel a, a heart of forgiveness or a heart of love it is god who pours out his love on you not you who pour out god's love on yourself okay so i think these are lovely places because you have no control of your own emotions and when you don't have control is when you are at your best place because that's where you come humbly before god and say lord um this is your doing this is this is something only you can do and 
uh, you know, because I, I'm thinking if, you know, if it was so easy, we could have all forgiven, right? If it was that easy for us to just begin to feel, you know, a sense of love and forgiveness to someone who's really offended us, it would have been really easy. It, it's out of your doing, but it is not our doing. It is the doing of the Lord in our hearts. So every time you experience it, and I think that's a journey, every time you experience it, it's coming willfully and handing over and saying, Lord, I'm giving this to you because I am unable to manage these emotions on my own, right? And the Lord knows, the Lord knows and will help you to, um, will help you to, will help to change it. Like I said, that it's supernatural. The, the way that we, we we forgive or the way that we begin to feel love for an enemy does not come from within us. We are asked to do it, but it can only be done by that love that is poured out from God and ask the Lord for it. Okay. So it may not be explainable, Sam, but it's it's tangible. It's something that's tangible as we continue to just lay that down before the Lord. Okay. The second question you had asked about is what happens if the other person does not take your forgiveness and um, and does not reconcile. So forgiveness is something that we are called to do, but reconciliation requires two people. So if the other person is not willing to reconcile with you, uh, not willing to take your forgiveness, there is nothing you can do about it. You have done what God's asked you to do, to release the forgiveness, to extend forgiveness, to, to go and to, um, you know, iron it out, sort it out. But if it doesn't, if, if, it, if you don't see a reciprocation from that end, you are free to let it be. Okay. But guard your heart that that doesn't become another reason for you to harbor anger. You know, I've done this much. I went all out of my way to forgive and to reconcile, but they have done this. And so now, you know, I can I can be stiff necked and I, I don't have to, you know, I, I feel more righteous and ju justified. But that's what we got to be careful of. On one hand, yes, we release it. If they don't, we release it. But being careful that that doesn't become, again, another, uh, uh, you know, a, a fertile place to harbor maybe irritation or anger towards them. Yeah, I hope I answered that. Yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I just want to take uh, some time right now to just pray um, because, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure in all of our lives there is that either one, two, three, five, ten, I don't know, ten people who uh, we can, even as I'm talking, I have images in my mind coming up even as I'm talking to you, you know, that, that we need to come before God to do that. And, uh, you know, because all of us are here collectively and we know that the Spirit of God is present when we are all coming together in oneness, let's pray. Let's ask God to help us in this restoration process, uh, wherever we may be. Some of us may be um, far behind, some of us may be well ahead, wherever it is the Lord can put us at speed. Okay, so just join with me as I pray. And wherever you're sitting, um, you know, if you have a pen or a paper, I'd like you to maybe write the name of the person on, on the paper in front of you, place your hand. And uh, we're going to ask the Lord to help us forgive, help us forget, help us let go, to see them the way Christ does and to be able to release the blessing of the Lord. Okay, so take this time, two seconds, uh, five seconds, quickly write the names of, I'm doing it too, okay, quickly write the names of these people. Um, and uh, yeah, write the names of these people and let's all collectively together uh, pray. Okay, so shall we pray together? Okay, so I'd just like you to place your hand on those names and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you because you know the depths of our hearts. We thank you because you know the pain and the scars that we have faced as a result of being offended 
in some way or the other by this person. Lord, we thank you that each of them are your creation, your children, born in your image. You died on the cross for them. You forgave them. Father, and so who are we to harbor anger over them? They're your children. Lord, they have been set free. And Father, we want to do likewise. Master, forgive us for harboring all those negative emotions over these people all these years. Lord, we release them to you, Father. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us the strength, Lord, and the spirit to forgive them, to release them of the hurt that they have caused us. Lord, we, by, by the power of your spirit, we pray and we ask, Lord, that we will completely get them off the hook of our resentment and bitterness. Lord, we release them, we forgive them in Jesus' name. And Father, not just forgiveness, we pray for your power and your strength to help us forget the experiences of those pain. Lord, even as we may, a lot of us may be um, interacting with them still, all those memories, those feelings that come up, Father, we release to you. We hand it over to you, not because we can do it, but because we need your strength and your power to help us. Mighty God, we pray that we will begin to see them as the way you see them, with that same unconditional love that you have. Lord, that we will begin to see them as your children, as your blessed and chosen ones. And Father, in the face of our relationship, may we declare blessing, not just over their lives, but over this relationship. We declare, Father, Lord, that your love will bind this relationship. Your forgiveness and your, your mercy, your grace will bind these relationships. Thank you, Father, for helping us, for doing this in us. I pray, God, that you will release healing in our hearts, in our brokenness, Father, that we will hand it all over to you and we will experience the freedom only you can give through the power of your love. Thank you for doing this to us. We are forever indebted that you have given us the freedom to live, to love and to, and to um, experience these relationships freely. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we we will break for um, for ten minutes. It's ten fifty five on my clock, and we will be back in ten minutes. That's eleven five for our next class.